from a world leading air power in the Korean War to a backward third world level force in the latter years of the Cold War to its emergence as quite possibly the world's most powerful air force in the early 21st century, an assessment of China's aerial warfare capabilities has vital implications for the balance of power in both East Asia and globally in the coming decades. The PLA Air Force began to receive its first fighter jets late in 1949. The Soviet MiG-9 and MiG-15 fielded as the J-1 and J-2 respectively. China became the world's largest operator of the MiG-9, but the jet was quickly phased out of service due to its performance limitations. Deliveries of large numbers of MiG-15 fighters, however, effectively turned China into a world-class air power effectively overnight, with nothing in the inventories of its adversaries, including the United States, capable of matching the jet's performance. In the Korean War, the MiG-15 allowed Chinese forces to contest air superiority effectively against American fighters and had better climb and turn rates and a superior altitude to the American F-86 Sabre. Their targets were American bombers such as the B-29 which had ravaged the Korean peninsula with an intensive firebombing campaign, killing hundreds of thousands of Korean civilians. The MiGs were successful in denying the deadly B-29 access to northern Korea, causing heavy losses among the American bombers. In the Korean War's aftermath, China would receive more MiG-15 fighters from the Soviet Union, and later received more advanced MiG-17 jets, which served as the J-4 and J-5. The new fighter was faster and had an overall better flight performance than the MiG-15. Like the MiG-15 before it, the MiG-17 was considered the most capable fighter jet in the world when it first entered service in 1952. The Chinese fighter fleet would again see combat in the Taiwan Strait in 1958, going up against Taiwanese F-86 fighters equipped with AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air missiles. This was the first time air-to-air -air missiles were ever used in combat, and partly compensated for the superior capabilities of the Chinese jets. China would, by the late 1950s, field three classes of bomber beginning to produce the IL-28 under license as the H-5 and receiving the Tu-16 and Tu-4 bombers from the Soviet Union. China began to field MiG-19 fighters as the Shenyang J-6 from the early 1960s, producing the aircraft under license. While China had relied on Soviet support for its military modernization throughout the 1950s, a political shift in Moscow under the Nikita Khrushchev government towards seeking rapprochement with the Western bloc at China's expense seriously undermined relations. From the early 1960s, the latest Soviet weapons, including fighters and air-to-air -air missiles, could not be accessed. China thus faced a rapid loss of technological parity in its armed forces. In the 1960s, the H-5 and J-6 continued to form the mainstay of the Chinese fleet, while efforts to reverse-engineer the MiG-21 and H-6 designs were escalated. The Vietnam War provided China with the opportunity to assess new Soviet weapon systems, including modern versions of the MiG-21 and the S-75, with these transiting through Chinese territory to reach North Vietnam. In the 1960s, China continued to manufacture the J-6 fighter and developed the Nanchen Q-5 attack jet as a specialized derivative. New J-7 fighters would make their first flight in 1965 and were heavily based on the Soviet MiG-21. The H-6 bomber, reverse engineered from the Soviet Tu-16, would enter service at the end of the decade in 1969. The Soviet States and Americans continued to widen the gap between their own frontline aircraft and those in Chinese service. The Soviets began to rely more on advanced third-generation aircraft from 1970, including the MiG-25, MiG-23, and Su-22 armed with modern missiles such as the R-40 and R-23. The U.S. began to field fourth-generation fighters from 1974, such as the F-15, F-16, and F-14. The F-14 was armed with powerful new AIM-54 air-to-air missiles. The Soviets would deploy their own fourth-generation jets from 1981, foremost among which were the MiG-31 interceptors and MiG-29 and Su-27 medium and heavyweight fighters. The disadvantages facing China were now overwhelming. China continued to manufacture large numbers of J-6 fighters and a smaller number of J-7 and H-6 platforms throughout the 1970s. The Air Force sought to close the gap with the superpowers, with three major new fighter programs including the enhanced J-7 variant, 
the J8 interceptor and an extremely ambitious J9 fighter. The J9 was meant to fly at an extreme altitude and exceed three times the speed of sound, comparable to the Soviet MiG-25 and American SR-71, with combat capabilities intended to match the Su-27 and F-15. The program was eventually cancelled as too ambitious. The J-8, however, would be successfully developed into a modern interceptor with twin engines derived from those of the MiG-21 but a heavier, elongated airframe. Hanna also received six MiG-23 fighters and R-23 missiles from Egypt, the most advanced foreign jets it would gain access to during the Cold War. The J-8 would shortly afterwards enter production, possibly benefiting from MiG-23 technologies, alongside more advanced variants of the J-7. These still represented a very small minority of the fighters produced, with the vast majority still being early second-generation J-6 jets. China would make other attempts to develop more advanced jets, including the Q-6 attack jet based on the MiG-23 and the J-13 light multi-role fighter which used MiG-23 technologies. The J-12 was also developed as a lighter version of the J-6, capable of takeoff without a runway. These programs were all cancelled. China would acquire more advanced French Magic air-to-air missile technologies, which were developed into the PL-5 and integrated onto J-7 and J-8 fighters. European technology was still well behind its Soviet and American counterparts in most fields, including air-to-air missiles. The engagement range of the Chinese aircraft, shown here proportional to the size of the Taiwan Strait, was still very limited. The Soviet R-27 deployed by frontline fighters and the R-40 and R-33 deployed by MiG-25 and MiG-31 interceptors respectively all very comfortably outperformed the new PL-5 and PL-7, particularly when combined with the higher speeds and altitudes of the Soviet jets, which also benefited from superior sensors and electronic warfare systems. The range of the R-33 would be further extended before the Cold War's end. The US Air Force had similar advantages with the AIM-7 deployed by frontline fighters and the AIM-54 deployed by its F-14s both providing an overwhelming edge. The Soviet R-33 and American AIM-54 also benefited from active rather than semi-active radar homing, which Chinese missiles lacked. The 1980s saw China develop the J-8 II, using more MiG-23 technologies for better beyond visual range capabilities. A new strike fighter, the JH-7, also reached advanced development stages and saw its first flight. By the Cold War's end in 1989, the J-6, a mid-1950s design, made up over 75% of China's fighter and attack fleets. J-8 and J-7 platforms remained a small minority. Approximately 5,000 combat jets were in service. Here is a look at the numbers of each major type of combat aircraft in service, fighter, attack, strike, and bomber. China's first strike fighter, the JH-7, was not yet in service. The Soviet and American technological and numerical advantages were very significant. The discrepancy becomes clearer when looking at which generations the aircraft and each power's inventory came from, first, second, third, or fourth. China was approximately two generations behind with no fourth and very few third generation aircraft. The Soviets and Americans were both developing fifth generation jets at this time. Assessing the major fighters and interceptors deployed by weight also shows a distinct Chinese disadvantage, with heavier aircraft benefiting from longer ranges, more powerful sensors, higher altitudes and a higher missile carriage. China's heaviest interceptor was half the weight of its American counterpart, and less than a third the weight of its Soviet counterpart, which was closely reflected in their flight performances, sensors, payloads and other characteristics. A comparison of lighter fighters shows a similar trend. China's Air Force thus found itself in a very weak position as the Cold War came to an end. Although this would quickly change as relations with the Soviets improved, the economy rapidly grew and massive transfers of Soviet technologies could be organized to revolutionize the country's defense.